Hey everybody, Brandon with Beard CB82. So today we're going to actually take a little bit farther look into the uh, uh, air disc brake systems and some of their components. So you know, as a few guys requested, a few guys had a lot of questions. Damn air compressor, I tell you. Had a few questions about some of the components on their measurements, all this other stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and get the camera turned around here and go over some of that stuff with you while I have a... You know, nice little dead decoy, so to speak. So, stay tuned. Alright, so, well, I have everything here since this is still here and able to be used as a, a nice prop or dead decoy or whatever the hell you want to call it so to speak uh, we're gonna go ahead look over some of this stuff some of the stuff's still pretty grimy but uh, see what I can do here Move some crud out of the way now first thing are, are the tools you would need to change out a brake can now this is just the brake can on one of the calipers tool you're gonna need well, that's for adjusting, that's for later. You're going to need a three quarter inch wrench, a 13 sixteenths, seven eighths, and a three eighths. I express the three eighths drive with a 15 sixteenths focus. There it goes. With a 15 sixteenths shallow emphasis on shallow socket a half inch version of this is too thick unless you want to take all the tires off on the tractor when you do all the brake cans on the tractor uh, there there's just no point it's actually quite easier to do that unless you have to change out the pads only way you're going to change out the pads set right in here are gonna be if you take the tires off at which point in time uh, I still recommend a 3 8 but it's a lot easier to get to so you do want something a little bit on the heavier duty level as far as uh, strength rigidity all that jazz now we had a few questions about the brake can on how to do your measurements on a standard 30-30 uh, brake can uh, some people just swap out the piggyback you know put a new pancake in new piggyback on go ahead uh, hook your hoses up and uh, go to set it and you're pretty much off to the races unless you know they want the whole can done you have to measure your stroke on a threaded rod and I don't have a threaded rod off of a regular brake can like what we use on our trailers anyways you come with a uh, yeah, freaking. you have a threaded rod that extends so far out and then you cut it back to measure and that's how you get your measurement you hook it back onto the clevis back onto the uh, or shackle onto the uh, S cams on standard air brakes but this you don't uh, this only thing you have to do is cage it that's it stick your caging bolt in you take your extra extra long three-quarter inch socket cage the can as it cages your rod retracts now this as you can obviously see is quite the different rod there's a reason for that but uh, that's for how it actuates right inside here. Yep. Male end goes into the female end uh, quite literally. But then again, this is mechanics. We use that term quite often. One thing I forgot you'll need. Air brake assembly lube. So you do have to lube a little bit around the shaft because you're only going to have about maybe half an inch sticking out of... Uh, your hole here <laughs> but you'll take your air brake assembly lube you'll lube around the rubber grommet here and you'll lube around the rubber grommet up on the caliper 
So that's after you've taken your old one off. And then you'll just make sure you'll have your air hoses pointed up. And then it just slides in. Start bolting her back together. Hook your air hoses up, which is what you need your three wrenches for, the three quarters, 13 sixteenths, and seven eighths. Uh, this is more specific to the Freightliner Cascadia chassis equipped for this equipment. Uh, your mileage may vary depending on what the OEM of your rig has put together. So you may need something else for your airlines on your tractor. Keep that in mind. And uh, your air can may be a different setup depending on if it's a Meritor or if it's a Wabco. This is a Bendix. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and show you now how it looks kind of from the perspective on a tractor. All right, so here's pretty much the perspective that you're going to be dealing with whenever you have to do these on the tractor. Whenever you go to take these apart, you'll take your air hoses off. Uh, you'll need uh, three quarter for one, uh, 13 sixteenths for the other. If I remember right, or it might be 11 uh, Anyways, brain fart, but you'll take your fittings off while you can. This brass fitting here, and then the one right below it. And let me grab a flashlight, make that a little bit brighter for you. Pa pow Okay, that's too bright. There we go. All right, so you'll take your fittings off, and if they're good, save those fittings. You can reuse them. Just use pipe tape on them. Uh, yeah, that's a little bit too bright. But you'll go ahead. You've got your lower one and your upper one. <coughs> Excuse me. But after you've taken these off, move that out of the way. You can go ahead and start unbolting. Uh, you'll unbolt the top one a little bit, then go ahead, uh, start on the nut on the bottom side. Uh, do that most of the way, then start back on top. You might have to alternate a couple times, but this is the way that we found. And then after you get both nuts off, there's going to be a little bit of pressure on this guy. You can smack it with a hammer, and it'll fly off. Uh, it's usually stopped by the opposite tires. But if you have the tires off, like you're doing all brakes and all cans, all that jazz, that can uh, can go flying. So give the guy working on the other side a heads up. Just a little courtesy call. But fairly simple process. Then when you're bolting it back on, same thing. Uh, go ahead, snug up one side, snug up the bottom. Go ahead, do your two uber tight turns, top and bottom. Hook up your air lines, and then you can go ahead and uncage it, or you can uncage it first, then hook up the air lines. But as long as you get it bolted down first, you're usually pretty steady. You know, use your own discretion on how you want to go about it. All right, so next thing, say you've gone ahead, you've changed out your cans, you've put new brake pads in, Everything else has turned out fine. Um, you want to apply, you want to release all the brakes so you can go and do your adjustment. So you got to make sure your wheels are chalked when you go to do that, people. I know there's going to be somebody out there that's going to have a brain fart on that. But remember, this is inboard on the frame. This is usually readily accessible because it just sets offset a little bit. Um, I recommend a 3 8 you might need a uh, three or four inch extension on this depending on which side you're dealing with so you'll have a little bitty cone as you can see that's going to be covering up this port and inside this port there should be your shear nut this little bitty guy takes a 10 millimeter socket to turn that and it's like a nine millimeter e torx nobody makes a regular socket for it but oh well now when you have your brakes released you're gonna tighten it 
all the way till your pads make contact with the rotor so just snug it, it doesn't take much but if they make contact and you go snug and you want to go tight you're just going to shear that um, you're going to shear the shear pin adjusting nut then after it makes contact you're going to back it off well this one's not going to back off anyways because ooh. okay so that click adjusted you're going to do that three times uh, this is a good nut so i don't want to break it you'll back it off one click two click three click and you'll set your shear pin back in cover it back up you'll be good to go now always double check before you leave the shop get a little small rolling start tap your brakes a few times and there you go uh, different manufacturers have different break-in for brake pads. Um, Meritor has theirs, all the other names that I've mentioned throughout the past couple videos. But that's going to be how you're going to do it for the Bendix. Uh, recommendations, they uh, want you to coast, warm them up, get them run in. Leave that to shop discretion, your discretion, manufacturer, dealership, wherever you work. So just keep those things in mind. Other than that, it's, a, it's actually a fairly simple process if you're just changing out the cans. And yeah, changing out the cans is uh, pretty simple. If you got to change out the brake pads, well, it's no different than anything else. You got to pull the tires off. But you get two people working at it, you can roll around the truck pretty easy, take all the tires off. One guy works on taking off cans. The other guy puts in the brake, well, takes out the old brake pads, puts in new brake pads. If you got the time and the manpower, it, it can work out pretty slick. So, but my biggest emphasis is if you don't have to change the pads and you're just changing the cans, you're gonna want a fairly decent ratchet 3 8 drive with a 15 16 low I can't express that enough I've tried a half inch and it just doesn't work it binds up and then your ratchets kinda of stuck and then you're gonna have to get something like this to loosen up the other side anyways because you can only go so far with that half inch and it's just easier go this so oh and a uh, three-quarter inch ratcheting wrench it's too thick on the bendixes as well it just doesn't have the depth behind it so but three-quarter inch ratcheting wrench very awesome for uh, uncaging your brake can anyways Hope you guys found this helpful. Uh, any other questions, by all means, leave them down below. Uh, go ahead and feel free to get a hold of me, beardedcb82. It's on the about page at gmail.com. Um, all that other jazz. Anyways, uh, thank you guys for watching. Remember, shop safety is just as important as firearm safety. If you screw something up, somebody could die. Later.